What's up, everybody? Welcome in. We've got another episode of Back to the Beach with Stephen and Kristen. I am Stephen Coletti, of course. I am Kristen Cavallari. And here we are. We are in person. In person at the Dear Media studio here to give you the final episode of season two of Laguna Beach, The Real Fishbowl. I mean, <laughs> The Real Orange County. I like that. <laughs> Did you happen to catch the name on this one? Uh, I did not. Okay. It's The Last Surf, right? So, well, I saw two different titles. There was, I watched it on Netflix, and on mm. the actual, like, title card, I guess you would call mm. it, it says The Last Surf. But then when you click into the episode, when it says the title right before the episode actually begins, it said One Last Wave. So I'm like, where is the disconnect between all of these employees, you know? Like, who comes up with this? They I just had, pull it out of their ass? That's so funny. First of all, good for you for recognizing that. Because <laughs> I like actually, usually you. I, in all these freaking notes over here, I have nothing with the title of the episode. Just that the episode number. Me. And the fact that it's season two and the fact that it aired November 14th, 2005, which, you know. Wow. Very important information we that like is. to give here. <laughs> uh, but well done. Way, way to pick up the slack there. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, there is, yeah, there's some sort of like... From whether it's Netflix, whether it's Paramount Plus, whether it's MTV.com and what MTV wrote. And it's funny, I have two descriptions here of what the episode is because okay, there's always yeah. something a little bit different. I know, which is so funny to me. And I always kind of get a kick out of it because somebody like either somebody like I think there's one or there's like a guy who really likes to kind of pump you up a little bit. Well, we <laughs> like him. Keep yeah. him. <laughs> and then there's somebody who's just like, let me just get fucking through this job <laughs> and, uh, and, like, and just like types it out really fast and it's a little off. Um, I love the differences. Okay, wait, so do you have both? Yeah, in all front right, of so you? here's this is the first one from Paramount Plus. <laughs> okay. It says it's the end of summer and time has come for everyone to leave the beautiful Laguna Beach. The cast must come to terms with where their lives will go from here. So I was like, eh, all right. Okay. All right. And the next one, I feel like this is, um, you know, in honor of the fishbowl and a final read here. I was cracking up at this one, and I think it deserves a little David Attenborough. No, I, don't, I don't know who that is. Okay, Planet Earth. He's he's the British guy that, uh, <laughs> like, he he's the narrator of a lot of those, like, okay, relaxing yes. nature shows. Okay. So, oh, yeah, in honor of this. the real fishbowl. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, David Attenborough. <laughs> <laughs> the summer sun is oh. setting on Laguna Beach as Kristen prepares to leave for the next chapter of her life in college. College, huh? Well, <laughs> And LC gets ready to move to Los Angeles. So college? Well, I went to one class. So yeah, I was leaving to go to college, quite honestly. That was the plan, changed course very quickly. Where did you go to college? So I think we may have talked about this earlier, but I was enrolled at LMU up here in LA. Loyola okay. Marymount, okay. and literally went to one class, public speaking. Had to go around and say, hi, I'm Kristen Cavallari from Laguna Beach. And everyone's like, oh my God. I was like, I can't it's be like, here. who the fuck? Hi. <laughs> oh, so that's why. Well, I actually booked a show. I was hosting a show for UPN, which no longer exists, but it was a network back in mm -hmm. the day. That would be a long run, by the way, because... I don't know if yeah. you know, Laguna was six to 18 years ago. 18 years ago, so yeah. <laughs> and I was traveling around the country. So honestly, it was a combination of the two. But I was working. That's really why I dropped out of college. And you know, the college life just wasn't for me, mm. quite simply. I feel you. <laughs> it's a little interesting there with a lot of people that are meeting you for the first time that they have seen you on TV and all of a sudden you walk into their class. I actually do remember that. I remember that you went to LMU, but that's impressive that you went to one class. Thank you. And then called it a day. Yeah, I'm that's, proud of that's that. A, that's a record. You can't beat that. Well done. <laughs> I also <laughs> had this fear of public speaking. And so I was like, why would I put myself in this position? Uh, now I, I actually enjoy it. But there was a long time where I would get like anxiety mm. having to get up in front of a group of people and talk. Okay. So anyways, yeah, all of those things together i said well maybe this isn't for me gotcha <laughs> yeah things but turned I, out I'll okay take the credit on the show you know it seems like I and mean, people probably still think i'm going to usc at this point because we've never cleared that up that's so. right to start season two hey. you are very pumped on usc <laughs> especially going to the football games Absolutely. we talked about that but uh <laughs> we should give you a little credit here because the self-proclaimed cold-hearted whatever you want to say there thank you you are very human after all because this episode i think you cry in every single scene <laughs> I do. Are and, you okay? You know, I guess, thanks MTV, after 30 whatever episodes, you know, season one and season two, they finally showed that I am a real person with real emotions. I appreciate that. I'll end on a high note. I'll take it. But 
I was so emotional watching this entire episode. Everyone's emotional, but yes, I am crying a lot in this in this episode. And now I kind of understand like what you were going through season one with mm. prom and graduation, and you know moving up to San Francisco and everything. Because I had forgotten about a lot of these moments, and this is probably my favorite episode in the entire two seasons, just because. Having those real goodbyes to your friends and all of that real raw emotion is so special. I had forgotten about a lot of those moments. And so to go back and relive that, I was crying watching it. Mm. And I felt like I was just right back there again. And obviously not many people can say that they have those moments. So yeah. I loved this episode. You know what? Selfishly, I'm sure. I don't know if other no, people watching no, I, it I, it's, the same It's thing, a great but... episode. I mean, I feel like they... They round out, they tie everything up as, in a bow for us mm -hmm. for the first two seasons. They're clearly going a different direction for season three. And, you know, the Hills is starting, so Lauren's off doing that. You know, it's interesting. They didn't even really set up season three. I forgot about season three watching it. Well, actually, I watched a part of the first episode. You did? Just so we could finish you with really this. You really do your homework. <laughs> I'm impressed. So we'll get, we'll get to that. We'll get to okay, that in okay. a moment. But, um, no, I, I feel you. You know, I don't remember this episode at all. Yeah. And it's really interesting to see how it plays out because the the main part of the episode, the meat of it, is there's a big scene with Lauren and I talking about our friendship and everything and what's to come in life. Yeah. And there's a big scene between you and I. And I was yes. shocked to see that. And I was, I don't remember anything, everything at the end, the whole montage that happens is you're oh. reflecting a little bit. And I was like, look at all these nice, sweet moments that are in here. And yeah, look, I think that that is a lot of what's maybe been covered up by me focusing too much on some of those those more negative moments and, and, yeah. and kind of you know putting the show in that box. And then but I, I, you know what? I didn't lot, watch a lot of the episodes towards the end of season two, and I think this is the first time I've seen this episode. Because oh, wow. I don't remember, nothing was, no memories were coming back as far as me watching this episode. I was like, holy shit. I didn't know that this was in here. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, so, that's really cool. That, that I was... don't remember filming that scene on the beach with you either, though. Yeah. Which, you know, it seemed like we were in a great place. I mean, we'll so, get there, but. Yeah. I, I, I'm. Yeah, first of all, the, the, yeah, the crying in every episode, very sweet. And it's, it is, like you're saying, that you understand now kind of what we were going through. It was interesting for me to see you guys go through that as well. And, and it's, a, you know, because what we're dealing with, kind of what Lauren and I are talking about as we're moving to this next chapter or moving to L.A. or it's this next iteration of post uh, high school. Right. And but we've kind of like we've matured about it a little bit in our little, you know, 20 year old, 19 year old selves at that point. You see a little bit of that maturity. What you guys are going through is like, well, wait a minute. All I wanted to do was get the fuck out of here. Yeah. And now that time has come. Holy am, shit. am I going to be OK? I know. And and I think that, you know, again, it's something that all people can relate to at that point in their life. It's it's such an interesting moment that everyone goes through. Um, so oh. yeah, it's really cool to see those scenes with all you guys and and see you emotional like that. Like I, I you're a little roller coaster of trying to figure out how you're, are you gonna be okay and what's next and wait a minute, <laughs> was really interesting in this episode. And I was wondering for you, because you cry in every scene, what was the first scene that you cried watching? Was it right away? So or? I have right here, um, and this is when the Alex, Jessica, and I are predicting everyone's future. Yeah, yeah. Which, it's so funny because I've had a lot of people over the years be like, how ironic that everyone said that you were going to be a TV host and you did. And I'm, I've always been like, I don't remember yeah, like, that Who said all. that where? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. So that was actually cool for me to see. But I have, next to that, I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I was crying immediately. Oh, every scene. <laughs> every scene, literally. Yeah, yeah I, I this was a very emotional episode for me, for sure. And... It's funny because when the girls and I are talking about everyone's future, I feel like it's all kind of spot on. Oh, totally. I, I mean, we really nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and me still being single. Well, guess what, guys? <laughs> I am still single. <laughs> yes, I was married, but I am still single. So shit, they were right. <laughs> or well, I was right. No, I said that about myself. Little did you know that however many years it is now, I think we're on 18, 19 years, we're, we, we'd be sitting here discussing all this. I know. And the, the last thing that you say in that scene is I can't wait to see what happens. Yeah. And here we are, here so many years are. later, talking about this show, reflecting. And you guys did nail it. It's, it's Jessica got married and had kids pretty quickly. A thousand and, of them. Yep. Yeah, and and she's like, and Jessica says that you're gonna go on be a host. I can see you being a host, and you're like, really? I know. <laughs> really? What makes you think that? Because I'm on TV. Yeah, you're already, currently. And you're already like probably yeah, signing like up to host the show, yeah. which is really funny. <laughs> so then, uh, so yeah, then you you and and you do that, and and it's funny to see you guys pretty spot on about it. Um, I know. And and then from there. That it's, uh, it's the juxtaposition between 
Oh, wait, really quickly before we move on from this scene. We say that Jason was going to have a, a beer belly, <laughs> which he did for a few years. But <laughs> I would say out of everybody, he's had the most transformation, which we've talked about. Yeah. But I thought that was really cool to see Jason in Laguna Beach, what we thought he was going to still be to how he is now. Uh. He's like the most... I'd say put together, just like the most inspiring, I would say, out of all of us. Yep. So I just thought that was cool. I just wanted to give him a quick shout out for that. Absolutely. And and it's been so nice to connect with him. We did the episode with him, which was, uh, I think, one of my favorite episodes of the podcast, uh, yeah. talking to him. And, and him and I were catching up really for the first time in a long time. We, we had lost touch a bit. Um, and even just recently before the podcast, we had played golf together and it was the first time. I remember that. So yeah. it was, it was great to have that and, and see him. And yeah, you know what? I will say also everybody, you know, uh, connecting, even when we did the, the video for your, uh, campaign for Uncommon James, uh, connecting with everyone in the episodes, it's really great to see everyone, you know, doing well and, and see how far everyone's come yeah. and, and, and the choices they've made in their life. It's, it's really awesome. But you know, speaking of Jason, the contrast there between you girls and, and, and you know, sharing your emotions and, and being open I love this. to yeah. the boys' last surf, one <laughs> final wave, whatever you want to call it. The gnarlies are just flying around like, yeah, let's get the fuck out of here, bro. Like, it's there's no I love yous or anything. It's, it's so yeah. funny. The difference in guys to girls, I was cracking up so hard. Yeah, yeah girls are like, how am I ever going to move on from you? <laughs> guys are like, all right, call me, bro. <laughs> it's so great. And you can see, you know, the producers, of course, are telling the guys guys like we need some sort of you know um feelings of like all right how do you guys feel this is your last time at the beach like yeah. oh i know you guys are probably gonna come back and surf again here sometime but I like know. this is the last time before y'all go away like why don't you talk about that the guys were like yeah it's pretty gnarly man like we'll still be friends i guess this is it right <laughs> I know. Bye, Beach. It's so great. <laughs> bye, sir. I think Cedric was the only one who was actually leaning in. He's like, he bye, Beach. Moment. You want to say goodbye to the beach? Talon and Jason are like, oh, yeah, who yeah. gives a fuck? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and Cedric takes, takes a moment, which I see you and Lauren playing your parts very well. Or, or just, you know, you've come into your own as far as the characters in the TV show. Mm -hmm. uh, the last couple episodes we've seen in the season... You guys take those little extra moments. I know sometimes the producers are giving it to you, but you're very comfortable in the environment, and I think it's great for the audience because, um, you know, you guys are you guys are just com more comfortable on camera. And, and those like, those little moments where you're taking an extra second or watching somebody drive away or whatever it is, yeah. it could be cheesy, but it's impactful in a story that's built yeah. for TV. Well, I think it's a combination, too, of, yes, being more comfortable on camera. You know, we've been doing it now for a long time, but also... To me, like this emotion and this experience that I was going through was the realest thing I did on the show, you mm -hmm. know? So I think that in itself lent a hand to just being naturally really comfortable too because I was really leaving. I was really moving out of my house. These are all real goodbyes. Like it's all very real. To me, this was the most real episode, the realest episode, I yeah. guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, no, there was. And so I, I think that just kind of shines through. I would agree. And there's some stuff when we'll get into it where there's – really some great sincere moments in these scenes that of course are set up for the show for MTV to get what they need to mm -hmm. kind of put a bow on this whole thing but there's also a lot of really pure innocent moments uh, which yeah. are great and I think yeah make this episode stand out and, yeah. and perfect for a finale uh, there's a cute little scene with, with Alex M and Taylor and they're both they're just like they're just crying again the tears <laughs> are just rolling everywhere Alex is saying it's different Taylor's like it's gonna be a lot different and then Alex has this great line who is it's who am I gonna hang out with I know <laughs> just, I know I love that and that's I think a lot of the pressure for people when they're at this point in their life where they're like oh, alright I'm so excited to go to college and then all of a sudden it's here and it's like wait Oh, I'm not bringing all my friends with me. I'm not bringing all my comforts. My parents aren't going to be there. Yeah, to, to yeah. I'm not going to lean on them when I go. And yeah. yeah, it's it's really interesting to see this realization in real time. And what that's what part of what I think makes this show stand out because it's real. These moments are real with these people. I agree. All right, you guys, let's chat about our good friends, HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Flavor is in full bloom at HelloFresh. Enjoy the taste of spring with chef-crafted recipes featuring ripe seasonal ingredients delivered right to your door. HelloFresh does more than just delicious dinners. Not only can you take your pick from 40 weekly recipes, but you can choose from over 100 items to round out your order, from snacks and easy lunches to desserts and pantry necessities. Everything arrives in one box on a delivery day you choose. 
When the spring sunshine is calling your name, don't call for takeout, get HelloFresh instead. Their quick and easy meals make feeding the family a cinch and without that high price tag. Their new fast and fresh options are ready in just 15 minutes or less. No more scouring the grocery store for that one ingredient to complete your recipe. HelloFresh takes away all that hassle by delivering fresh pre-portioned ingredients so you have exactly what you need and helps you cut down on food waste. Okay, you guys, I'm going to be real with you. Between working on my most recent cookbook and then just promoting the heck out of it, I am burnt out on cooking. I have not wanted to make one single meal. So I'm really leaning on HelloFresh right now to get me and my family through the days because I'm just in a cooking rut at the moment. So HelloFresh has really come in clutch for me here. Well, guys, find out why HelloFresh is the number one meal kit. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Beach16 and use code Beach16 for 16 free meals and free shipping. All right, you guys, this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Guys, it's so easy to get caught up with what everyone else needs from you, and you never take a moment to think about what you need from yourself. Well, we've mentioned it here on this podcast, but we absolutely prioritize our mental health here. It's, it's a big reason why we're here having fun with back to the beach and talking about all the old episodes and what was true, what was not, what you guys watched on this little show when we were teenagers, when we were still developing our brains. Um, but we obviously have spent time now to be able to elaborate a little bit and take back some of the uh, narrative that was built for us and and discuss you know what was really going on, which has been therapeutic, wouldn't you say, Kristen? Absolutely. I have loved the experience. Um, yeah, I mean, I've said it before, you guys, but I can't stress enough how much I love therapy. There's never been a time where I haven't walked out of therapy feeling so much better. Just to have that third party, that sounding board with an unbiased opinion, I think is really beneficial. So you guys, if you're thinking of starting therapy, definitely give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Guys, find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash beach10 today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash beach10. And then, yeah, let's get into the, the meat of kind of MTV rounding out this whole, the whole love triangle of it all, if you will. And, and they let's have- Let's round it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They have me popping over to, to Lauren's house uh, for a good friendly conversation about life. Um, and before I, I meet you at the beach, uh, which, which by the typical. way, yeah, very typical. <laughs> I was shocked to see, well, actually I'm not shocked because I know what probably happened, but that I was not in the same wardrobe walking down the beach to meet you from what I wore right. to Lauren's house. I mean, you would think. <laughs> and, and how, here's my spidey senses on that one. I feel like they probably asked me to, to wear something cause they did this a lot. And there was times toward the end where I'm like, I'm not going to wear the same clothing because I know what you guys are going to do at this point. Oh yeah. And so I got to push back yeah. a little bit. And that was my big little, my big little my big pushback is, is i'm a changing thing my clothes because, yes damn it. I'm, yes i'm wearing something different we're gonna make it a different day and it'll you fix got them it'll fix everything i <laughs> boy did i get another one up on mtv <laughs> good work uh so uh they split it up with a commercial break after that scene with lauren and i and then commercial break and they come back and i think you know you can't tell when you're streaming it oh. but you you know the transition piece is there and it's like the waves so are crashing you really felt like they wanted it to be the exact same like right after Lauren's house cuz i didn't i didn't get that but oh, i really? yeah but i mean i'm i don't pay attention to that kind of stuff like you do like yeah, i'm yeah. i think i'm just watching it as a viewer and i get sucked in and i'm uh, like oh, yeah. this is great see i'm so sensitive to it that's the whole <laughs> yeah, thing for me is, yeah. is the what was put out there um you know my yeah, I guess biggest insecurity with the whole show is just that how the, this love triangle was portrayed and, right. and, and, and how memorable it wound up being for people and being like, oh, man, this is, you know, an odd thing for me to swallow, basically. Yeah, yeah. And um, Well, that makes sense. So you're paying attention so to every detail. So I'm paying attention detail. to those details. You know what I did notice was Lauren's capri pants because those were so trendy. And oh, yeah? You would never be caught dead in those <laughs> now. But I was like, God, it was such a time to be alive, capris. That's I just bought Sailor some capris. And she was like, what are these? <laughs> like, daughter well, throws them away. Short, it's like, also these not away. a pant. I'm like, I don't know. It's in between. <laughs> How old is your daughter? She's seven. Seven? <laughs> like, what are these capris, cute mom? Cute little Zara capris. I'm gonna just put them on. Get these out what of here. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, so th this is a, you know, it's a sweet scene with with Lauren and I, you know, MTV. It's of course an MTV scene, but we, we've got some nice moments in there. And I think you see, you know, why Lauren is so great at her job in these shows. 
um, you know, the way that she's describing her feelings and, and she's wearing her heart on her sleeve. And, you know, she's she's what MTV needs her to get. She's nailing for yeah. him. And, and there's a lot of those lines in there where she's saying everybody changed so much. But when we all got together this summer, it was the same. And kind of what I alluded to earlier. Yes, there is a little bit of growing up because you do to me. I think you grow up the most in your life. That one year you go away to college. That is a big it's a huge jump. Yeah, yeah, I think that that's the most one of the most drastic years of your life, probably when your kids arrive as well, of course. But when you're young, it's when when you go away, of course. So there, you know, there's the maturity there, and she's you know she's she's talking about guys, and I have bad judgment. She's like, you're gonna disagree with that, and then of course I'm like, I know foot in my mouth. <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything there. I know. Um, Which is funny because you know obviously this is when her and Jason were done for a minute, but yeah. then she moves up to yeah, LA yeah. and goes right back. <laughs> of course. <laughs> So, yeah, and look, MTV needs us to get together and, and chat. And it's funny because I get there and I'm like, oh, my view, like the view I fall in love with. And at the end of the scene, I'm talking about my truck. <laughs> like Lauren's OK to talk. You know, she, she's more, you know, uh, open to talking about her feelings yeah. and her personal relationships. And I'm like sitting there like, oh, cool lamp and nice She was chair. emotionally you, mature, I think, yes. for her age, especially next to us. And that, <laughs> yes, and that is what I'm trying to say. I give her yeah. a lot more credit because I'm still fidgety and awkward there. And, and she's... Um, more stoic now mm-hmm. in these moments. And yeah. there's, you know, uh, there's a little I want to point out at the end there. Um, they've got a little line cut from LC that's coming from me, and it's over her nod. She's nodding at something during our conversation, but MTV put it at the end of this conversation with the wild line for me saying, here we go again. Mm. And of course, what MTV's trying to do is really paint the picture of like, oh, LC is going to be in LA. Steven's going to be there. They're going to get together, let's you know? Yeah, let's see what happens. So it's it's funny to see how that, um, you know, that was edited together and, and how they made that conversation and um, work for, for the show. And then we get outside and, yeah, I'm like tapping my car and saying yeah. goodbye there. And I'm like, all right, peace. You know where to find me. I know. Um, <laughs> that was funny. So and speaking of crying, I, I will say the truck. And I think I've mentioned this before. It's the last time we're seeing this truck in the show. (laughs) I did cry when I sold that thing. I sat in it, cried like a baby, uh, which was unexpected. So many memories. Yeah, a lot of memories in that thing. Times in that truck. I Um, get it. But then, all right. Then let's go to the beach, shall we? You and me for one last hurrah. Yeah. So there, you know, the editors, the composer who I've got here, what is his name? I want to give him credit. John Ernst, uh, mm-hmm. the composer. Obviously, all the music. There's a lot of great stuff from that time in the show. Uh, this but- is, I actually wrote down that I feel like most of this episode was just really sad music, emotional <laughs> music. Yeah. Not much was actually said. It was mostly the music and yeah. some cheers. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, it evokes. But it works. <laughs> yeah, yes. It evokes, excuse me. It evokes an emotion there. And yeah. Uh, yeah, the song, there's a few things playing, um, you know but there's, I, a, oh, I was just gonna say, there's a little transition. It's a great shot. Again, they're hitting their stride with the show. Uh, you know, you're sitting there, it's over you in the staircase in the background. And then I come walking down. It's very dramatic. Yeah. There's a little music shift, you know, a little beat transition from yeah. what they used coming out of the scene with Lauren, coming out of also the commercial break. And then, okay, a little bit of a shift. Now it's Steven and Kristen are having a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, interesting to see how they, tie, how they um, you know, chose to edit that. Um, but yeah, there's a funny little scene here. Huh? I like the scene. I mean, I felt like you and I seemed really comfortable. Again, I just feel like the emotion was very real. Um, like I really, I know I was actually sad here. You know, I think that they filmed all this in real time, obviously. And I think for me, the biggest thing from this scene was I said at one point, you know, the whole year I just wanted to leave and now it's really happening for the longest time probably up until a few years ago, I never lived in the moment. It was like I always wanted to be in the next phase of my life. And now in the last few years, I'm trying to just be present because, you know, some of the best years of your life, you don't even realize you're in them when you're in them. And then they're gone. And you're like, why couldn't I just enjoy that moment? Mm -hmm. That's been like the biggest takeaway for me. But it's interesting that I had that insight at age 18 and I didn't apply it to my life. Mm. Well, I think that there's, yeah, it's such a sensitive kind of complicated time in one's life at that moment um, and it's very it's a unique feeling but yeah it, it's it's cool to see that you have you know you may be a little wise beyond your years at that moment of like this of like all right I I feel like I'm there's this is a teaching moment for myself I'm yeah. learning something here this is a new experience a new feeling um, you know I wrote down here that you're you're deep in thought as I'm coming down the stairs and if you see like you could see on your face there's a weight 
of everything that's about to change in your life. Yeah. And yes, like you said, you've been waiting for it, but are you ready for it? And I can actually really see those feels uh, on your face. And <laughs> I wrote that she's got all the weird feels. I and, know, I did. Yeah. Yeah, because I said Alex and I went through a phase where we were just over it. I think that that's more what it was. Like, there was a phase of senior year where we're like, Ugh, we just want to get out of here. We're over this. Mm. But it was so much fun. Like, that was like some some of the best times and instead of just being like okay I can't wait to move up to LA I can't wait to do this just enjoy it because it's over in a flash and that's just that's life yeah. and especially now having three kids it's like everything just goes by so quickly but I think that's like the biggest takeaway is just enjoy the moment just be present I think mm -hmm. for everybody mm -hmm. yeah and look I think this scene here it's funny you know we've talked about it before everything it's so fresh from out of our relationship at that time that everything is still kind of boiling there but you do see some maturity yeah a little maturity between yes. us where there <laughs> we still manage to get into some sort of like you know you're saying i don't have any negative thoughts and i'm like uh, yeah, like see yeah and then i talking I, I, about because we were talking about su the sushi date on the beach that's right and i it was a i was having a positive reflection yes. and i said see i don't just uh, have all these negative thoughts so clearly you felt like i only looked at our relationship in a negative light which I, I, I mean, I really I think don't. I was and projecting I, at that moment. <laughs> I, mean, <yeah. laughs> I don't know. It's like, man, like, we went through I, a lot of shit. <laughs> I mean, we did go through a lot of shit, but like truly when I, and now obviously so much time has passed, but when I look back on our relationship, I really only have positive thoughts. I mean, of course there were moments I'm like, God, we were crazy. We were like, wh yeah, whatever. But, but overall, like, I think we had like a very sweet, innocent love. I really do. You know, that's, and that's high school. And I think that to, to be able to look back on that, and, and see it that way is is something special. And that's what's great about doing this podcast. And it's been fun doing it with you. Is like, we can look back at this stuff and laugh because yeah. you know we're, we're way beyond it. And we know that like, of course, at that time in your life, everything is is, is so you know uh, above your brain power, basically. Yeah. You're, you're not mature in your brains yet. You still have a lot to learn. And so the way you act out in processing all these heavy emotions is, is difficult. And yeah. we went through all that. And, but now, you know, it's years later, we've all gone on and, and to do different things. And, and it's just, it's, you know, it, it's funny to see um, how even right here, we've, the beginning of our little maturing, you know, of like moving that relationship into a nice place in our life of, yeah, you know what, there was a lot of, um, you know, positive, a lot yeah. of uh, great things that happened at that time. And the negative falls by the wayside. And yeah, I could look at, I could sit here and say the same exact thing. I look back at that time in our life I'm like oh what young kids right you know and yeah. look at what, all the stuff that we went through together and that is with everybody mm -hmm. in the show you know all right. the stuff that we went through in real life but then also taking on the show um you know really forms that that bond and, and, and makes it unique but yeah you know it's it's funny that we've got a little bit of the mature conversation here is we have our little back and forth um and i say I, i've always gotten the vibe that i did something super harsh like i'm an asshole so it's just it was and just I interesting. Said, you, did. you did <laughs> and then i shoot you a look which is really funny and then you say i'm not having this conversation right now and then i say yeah. oh, i don't miss the tone of that voice but we say it in kind of a <laughs> laughter like moving again the beginning of where we can be now which is like yeah. we can look back on that stuff and totally laugh on it yeah. and there's no grudges there's no anything it's there's not yeah. I mean, that emotion is not boiling there anymore yeah um and it's it's funny to see that and and the way that conversation plays out you can't write that yeah i agree that I little agree. back and forth between us i mean that's that's real life yeah. and i think that's what's captivating to an audience who's trying to process reality tv kind of for the first time in their life of like okay what's real what's not yeah. but i'm being very drawn into this because it is relatable it is not so polished in our dialogue and okay. the way we speak and it's just like Ah, it's right, really if you funny. got handed a script with those lines, it would almost all of it would have this like really negative tone to it, you know. But mm -hmm. we had this way of making it like it's all good, like yeah. we're playful, we're having fun, we love each other, it's all good. And I think that's why I like this so much because and then like you jump on my back. Like we are cute and flirty and having fun, but it's like you can tell there's a difference now. It's not the same as it was. It's a friendship now. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. know that like it's not like all right, there's <laughs> anything on that you know, taking it above a, f a friendly level. It's it's now we're friends. Yeah. Yeah, we have that history, but like we could be friends now. Yeah. Which is nice. Um, we, got, we did it. We got yeah, there. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it took a minute. But in MTV's world, of course, the way that they, you know, put a stamp on it of like, Oh, you know, the way Steven's acting with Lauren and then come the way he's acting down with Kristen at the of beach. Course. And they've got the song playing in the background by Wes Hutchinson and the lyrics are all the ways we can't let go. 
all the weight we carry on. It's way down deep where I get no sleep. All the things I want to be and all the things I cannot change live together inside of me where they swim about. I love that you wrote that out because I always felt like with this show, the music they played was telling you what to feel. So there you go. Yep. I mean, that's a part of it. And that's what, yeah. for me, it's, you know, I'm doing this now with what everyone is doing great in storytelling. You know, you're, you're helping, you know. Guide. Uh, yeah, r- really emphasize certain moments and, and emotions. Yeah. And yeah, when you want to, you know, let a little song, um, you know, carry you through a scene, it, it really elevates it. And, and it, you know, it does here. And so they did, it, I thought it was a great choice of music here. Uh, very well done on their part. And I want to say this scene, which I find so interesting because we, of course, you know, set up for MTV. We're going to go sit on the beach and we're going to talk and we're going to talk about, oh, this is the end and how you're feeling and, and moving on. And then when we go to the top of the stairs, yeah. You see that there's... <clears throat> That's the real scene. We're waiting yeah. for them to set up. Yeah. And, and they want to get us coming up the stairs, get in the truck. So they're moving their cameras. The production team is doing their thing. And we're just sitting there waiting. And there's a real moment that happens that a camera catches because one of the guys who's already in position is just rolling as, of course, they're you know instructed to do. Just keep rolling, right? Yeah. And you know, you're, you're still breaking down. I'm there's, crying again. <laughs> yeah, I mean... So this was actually one of my favorite scenes in the entire show because it was very real and raw and there were so many emotions. But yeah, to your point, it was like we would start these conversations off camera Mm -hmm. and then they would pick it up and get it. And those to me, like that was us. That was not an MTV guided conversation. I know like meeting at the beach was and starting that conversation down on the beach, but then it turned into a real thing. And that's when you got me crying. Like that's when you got the real me. Mm -hmm. I know I did other times on the show, but with you, um, I wasn't going to go there on the beach but we were able to when we thought it was just us mm-hmm. or yeah. I thought it was I mean yeah but you still see like I was saying earlier you're there's so much going through your head uh when you're sitting there waiting and then yeah getting up to the top it's it's like it just keeps coming in waves for you yeah know? I know there's even setting up like a goodbye that is you're like I'm just, I'm saying goodbye to Steven who's you know it's not my boyfriend anymore <laughs> we're doing an MTV show <laughs> like yeah <laughs> but there's still a, a little it's sense of emotional. goodbye and it's another reminder to you that like I'm moving on with, you're moving on yeah. with your life and yeah. and and you know this next chapter is here and Regina, Regina George has got to find some new friends over there. Uh, well, <laughs> everything that you've built Alex all these is years. coming with me. That's true. So, but still. <laughs> uh, to round out that scene, though, between you and I, I, I think there's a, another masterful moment by MTV where, you know, it's shot over me through the truck onto you. You've got your jean skirt on. <laughs> and then, I, you know, I put the, the car in gear and I'm out. And then they, they tilt up to your face and you're watching me go. Yeah. And they've got the song playing there. And boom, that's it. All the feels. There it is. Yep, yep. So well done there, MTV. (laughs) Yeah, really great scene. You guys, let's chat about living proof. Hair problems can be complicated, and finding the right products that work for me is an expensive game of trial and error. Thanks to living proof, I'm saving time and money by getting the specific products that actually work for my hair. My hair is color treated, and especially with blonde, you have to be very careful, I think, just how much you're styling it, how much you're washing it. So I really try to make my shampoos last and my style. So when I wash my hair, I'll blow dry it, I'll I'll style it, but then I want to extend that at least for one or two days. So Living Proof is perfect for that. Living Proof is the leader in scientifically proven high-performance hair care. Their mission is to solve the world's toughest hair challenges by inventing different types of exclusive hair tech to treat individual hair health needs. Not sure what products are right for you? Well, instead of guessing, I start by taking Living Proof's AI online hair care quiz. It analyzes my specific hair care needs and styling goals, then uses their first to market technology to help customize the right hair care routine for me. Living Proof studies the root cause of specific hair issues, and their scientists develop groundbreaking technologies to treat it. When the ideal formula or solution doesn't exist, Living Proof actually invents it. That's why they are credited with 120 global patents, 450 plus formulas, and over 200 awards. After 20 years of leading hair invention, Living Proof prides itself on their commitment to rigorous testing that is unparalleled within the hair care industry. Living Proof always formulates without silicones, harsh sulfates, SLS and SLES, parabens and phthalates. They're also PETA certified, cruelty-free, color safe and safe for chemically treated hair. Thank God, cause that's me. 
I absolutely hate washing my hair every day because I think it just dries it out. And so I absolutely love their Perfect Hair Day dry shampoo. And with a name like that, you are definitely going to get perfect hair. It really revives your hair. It fluffs it up. It makes it look like you just got it done. And I can't stress enough how much I love their products. Okay, you guys, so save your hair from the guessing game and give it the products your hair deserves with Living Proof. Visit livingproof.com slash beach and use code beach to get 15% off your first purchase. That's livingproof.com slash beach, code beach for 15% off your first purchase. Livingproof.com slash beach, code beach. All right, you guys, let's talk about Haya. If you've listened before and you're a parent, then you've definitely heard me talk about it. I love them. Typically, children's vitamins are basically candy in disguise. They're filled with two teaspoons of sugar, unhealthy chemicals, and other just gummy junk growing kids should never eat. That's why Haya was created, the pediatrician-approved superpower chewable vitamin. While most children's vitamins are filled with five grams of sugar and can contribute to a variety of health issues, Haya is made with zero sugar and zero gummy junk, yet it tastes great and is perfect for picky eaters. Haya fills the most common gaps in modern children's diets to provide the full body nourishment our kids need with a yummy taste they love. Formulated with the help of nutritional experts, Hyatt is pressed with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies, then supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals, including vitamin D, B12, C, zinc, folate, and many others to help support immunity, energy, brain function, mood, concentration, teeth, bones, and more. It's non-GMO, vegan, dairy-free, allergy-free, gelatin-free, nut-free, and everything else you can imagine. Check all the boxes. Hyatt is designed for kids of all ages and sent straight to your door so you have one less thing to worry about. If you guys follow me at all, then you know what a health nut I am. I am constantly reading nutritional labels. I want to see what is going in my body, my kids' bodies. And I really stay away from additives, chemicals. And so that's why I'm such a fan of Haya because there is no crap in these. And I just have peace of mind that my kids are getting all of the vitamins and minerals that they need. If maybe we're not eating the healthiest, especially now with summer coming up, we're probably going to be on the go a lot more than we have been. And so... I'm sure they're not going to be eating as healthy as we typically do, which it's all good because they'll be taking their Haya vitamins. And you guys, we've worked out a special deal with Haya for their best-selling children's vitamin. Receive 50% off your first order. To claim this deal, you must go to HayaHealth.com slash beach. This deal is not available on their regular website. So go to H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H.com slash beach and get your kids the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. There's a, a final scene I I, I want to mention um, because this is where I got emotional. <laughs> Are you going to cry right now? <laughs> no, but seeing huh. Alex H., yeah. you, and Jessica all say goodbye. At my house, yeah. I was a wreck watching this. Like, I feel I like you're getting a little emotional had, like, right tears now. tears streaming down my face. Just, again, I mean, it's just, it's so real. Um, and, you know, and every, all the emotions that we're all going through. I mean, and I say in this scene, you know, thank God I don't have to say goodbye to you, Alex, because I was only saying goodbye to Jessica, and I was a wreck. Um, but I want to say, this is when I was really driving up to L.A. I can't imagine that it would have been a different day. I don't know why it would have been. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, I'm a crying wreck. Jessica is crying. And, um... That's just that's just how it was. I don't know, but luckily Alex and I were moving in together, so we didn't have to say goodbye to each other. I can only I wouldn't have been able to get through the scene. I don't think. Mm. <laughs> so so much emotion there. Uh, yeah, r really moving and really sweet to see that between you guys. And look, I watching this whole season, some of the episodes for the first time, uh, and seeing everything that you guys went through. You know, I was you know I was very invested in that story. But just seeing to me some of the most interesting stuff is you and Alex H and Jessica together. Because you guys all had so much different, so many different things going on, and, and and you're trying to help each other out, but you're still so young and still trying to figure everything out on your own. Uh, it's it's good stuff. And so I think to the end to see you guys all first, you know, you're hugging Jessica, and there's a lot of I love yous, which again, not many I love yous thrown between Cedric and Talon and Jason. No. Um, and you guys then, you know, Alex joins the hug, and you guys are, you know, just bawling. It's it's really sweet, and then that's it. Um, I, I do need to point out your jewelry at that at that moment did you notice it 
My earrings? Not your earrings. Oh, I think I had some sort of a horn necklace <laughs> okay, on. Horn? Yeah, and these blue earrings, yeah. Uh, okay, I didn't notice the blue earrings, but I noticed like it was like a bobcat tooth or something. I was like, it, yeah. was it... Was it like a claw? And then I was like, it was some sort a of talon? a horn. A ta- <laughs> Maybe a talon gave it to me. <laughs> yeah, no, I noticed it. I was going to just skip right over that, but hey. <laughs> Do you remember? I, I think Talon had a license plate that his license plate was Eagle Claw. Oh, God. Do you remember it, that? No. <laughs> that seems right. Well done, though. Talon. Yeah, suits him, I feel like. <laughs> That is really funny. Yeah, no, I had a lot of um, questionable jewelry choices on the show for sure. Come a long way. Come a long way. Uh, and Besides then, the black choker, that thing has stood the test of time. There you go. <laughs> and then we've got Lauren saying goodbye. She's got her black and pink bag sticking out of her BMW. Yeah. I wonder if she really drove to LA like that. I know. That. I was wondering <laughs> the same thing. There's no way. I don't think so. I mean, no. it's like with her and I on the Golden Gate Bridge with the surfboard that's out of the truck. Like, obviously, this yeah. is that's you know some extra staging there by MTV. <laughs> Um, but yeah, then, you know, we, we get to the end there and yeah, this was, you know, surprised to see this and, and, uh, it was moving to see a lot of these nice memories, uh, flash, you know, on screen as they, you know, were showing you coming down to check the, you know, oh, look out okay, at the, the ocean. montage at the end. Yeah. Oh you're, my you're God. deep in thought there. I know. I absolutely loved this. I thought it was really sweet. I just, how else would you end this show? You've got to do it like that and go over all of the good memories and really wrap it up in a nice bow. And I thought they were kind to us where they were really showing us in a positive light. And personally, I'm just so happy because they really made it seem like I was a stone cold bitch on the show. And this whole episode is like, see, guys, I had emotion. (laughs) So I, yeah, Yeah. I just loved it. The montage really pulled on the heartstrings, and I thought it was really very sweet. It's it's great to hear you say that about, you know, what you felt with the show, because, you know, I've I've always told you this as well. I felt like, yeah, of course, they really hammered on you for being the quote unquote bitch. Yeah. um, And and didn't feel like that was that was true. And to have this last episode where, yeah, you are processing so much emotion, you are very raw, you're crying a lot, and then to have a montage at the end there um, filled with some positive memories. And yeah, then, it wasn't all negative. Yeah, <laughs> and you, you say goodbye, you know, to Laguna as we yeah. all say goodbye to season two of, of Laguna Beach. And there you are driving and created by Liz Gately pops up on the screen. And that's a yeah. wrap. I know. Um, the the shot of me actually driving out of Laguna, I thought was very cool too. Yeah, it was a very beautiful shot. We pull out of there, we pull out of Laguna Canyon, and um, we're off. Boom! So it's a great way to end it. There it is. I mean, I felt like it was my own little personal montage. Like this episode yeah. for me it was like, for me, I felt like it was like f- made for me. I'm like, you earned Thank it. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. They gave you this a little gift. This is one I would go back and watch in 20 years. Probably the only one, but I, I would watch this one again. <laughs> Speaking of, of a little gift at the end of it all, did they give you something? Do you remember MTV yeah, giving you a gift? must have, and now I don't remember. I remember I got a watch. I got a tag watch, which my me? dad. <laughs> I don't remember Maybe they, they gave, gave you me. one as well. Like a few Maybe, yeah. although I feel like I would have remembered that. I feel like they gave the girl something different, but now I can't remember what it was. Hmm. All right, let's round it out here, you guys. What's what's your audience rating for this episode? Okay, audience, I went A. And again, mm-hmm. maybe I'm looking at it from a personal lens, but because for me personally, I love this episode, but I thought it was extremely emotional. And I just really loved the montage at the end, and I felt like all of these emotions are relatable. So and just wrapping up the whole thing. I just felt like it was a great episode. Yeah, um, I'm, I got the same. I mean, it's it's a, yeah, they edited together perfectly. Uh, a lot of great shots. The music was good. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, they've, they've got something here, uh, of course. And um, yeah, for yeah. a personal rating, I'm going A minus. Oh my God. I'm keeping it positive. I'm keeping it up at the A. Um, you know, A minus, uh, I mean, I don't know. It's just the... The minus is for, you know, you still got a little growing up to do. You oh, know? God. <laughs> so. Just give yourself a fucking A. <laughs> <laughs> you it's can the get last boom, one. plus. Boom. There you go. Boom. Nice work. We um, didn't chew our food or we didn't talk with, with food in our mouth. Right? We didn't mumble too much. There you but go. You know what? Yeah. It's an A minus. Fuck. All right, fine. <laughs> <laughs> I also gave myself an A. Maybe I'll go A+. plus. I don't know. This might be my first A. I'm not entirely sure. If it isn't, it should be. Mm. (laughs) But, I mean, shit, I finally showed some real emotion. Mm. I wasn't just a bitch. So, (laughs) nice work to myself. (laughs) All right. What about a quote? 
Um, okay, so Jessica said, hold up. She said when the girls and I are all saying goodbye, um, she said, or maybe, oh, no, okay, sorry. I said this about Jessica, that the first time I met Jessica, she came up to me and said, I just want to introduce myself before Alex M. says anything <laughs> about me. And Alex H. goes, well, that hasn't changed much. <laughs> It's just like so perfect for the girls' dynamic. So high school. He's so high school. Yeah, that that is a good one. And I guess we instantly became friends, so it worked. <laughs> Did she come later? Was she? Do you remember? Or were you? Is when you arrived later? I may, it must have been when I arrived later, because okay. I don't ever remember her being the new girl. You know? Interesting. Yeah. Okay. What about you? All right. I've got. I got two here. I got one from you and one from Lauren. We'll we'll start with Lauren's, and at you know she's talking about her. Her poor judgment with guys yeah. as she's talking about, you know, her new move to L.A. And she says, it'll work out this time. I love L.A. And it was nice to see that for her because, of course, it does ultimately work out. And that's the beginning of what is a massive success, which yeah. is The Hills yeah. and that show. And then, you know, she still has a whole roller coaster ahead of her of life and stuff to deal with. But to see that it does work out for her, yeah. considering all that she's gone that she's gone through in this show uh, is really sweet to see, and she was right. So, um, you know, it's, yeah. it's that's a nice line. I thought that that is, you know, to go with the emotion, the heavy emotion, kind of the whole scene. I kept it serious here. Yeah. And I'm going to go with you. You mentioned it earlier on the beach. You know, you said the whole year I wanted to leave. Uh, I wanted to get out of here, and now it's here. And, yeah, we, we talked about it already. But that's it. Everyone could relate to that at that yeah. point in their life. It, that is a such a big realization and that you can only feel – when you get into that moment because yeah. we all think yeah I can't wait to go oh, it's going to be exciting and oh maybe it'll be a little weird but I'm ready to go and then you're you know looking at it in the face and you're having a little trouble processing that and you're scared <laughs> oh and, and and that's you know some people come home from college like people don't make it like <laughs> yeah. it's like it's a lot and um, look yeah again an audience watching this show uh, we talked about the relatability yeah. um, you know for me seeing the show and, and people being able to feel maybe a little less alone and watching it um, it's it's moments like these that make it really cool and re- make it really special yeah um, so that's wow. that that's that what about Season do over do you have two. one Oh, oh my God. I don't have one either. No, I don't have one. No, no do-overs. Shocking. At the end of it all, no regrets. Take the horn necklace off. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll take the sunglasses off my forehead. There you go. Yeah, okay, you know right, what? Right. Put them aside. There you stop go. fidgeting. There you go. Uh, but, but yeah, no. no, strong, strong episode. Great way to end it. I was so happy with this episode. Hey, dude. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. You survived. Oh, fuck. Laguna Bar- Beach, barely. the real Orange County. <laughs> barely, but I did it. Wow, I can't believe that's it. So let's, I want to real quickly talk about season three. Uh, I was curious. Okay, I jumped right. in there. I thought there was a new song over the opening credits, but it was just over the like introduction of the characters. So I was like, oh, right away, I was like, oh, they made a big mistake. They didn't keep the Hillary Duff. <laughs> but then I watched a little further. There it was. There's the Hillary Duff song. They've got Tessa, um, this girl Tessa is the narrator, and and they're introducing all these new characters. You do see Elsie's jacuzzi again oh. because they're introducing her little sister. sister. <laughs> and so Lauren and, and Brianna are in there. Yeah. And then Jessica Smith. She's is, on it? She's in it because she's dating one of the guys. <laughs> what? I was like. Who is she dating? Cameron. Wow, I really forgot about all of that. I don't think I've ever seen even two minutes of season three. Yep, so I watched the first five minutes of the first episode. So now you're going to go watch the whole season? (laughs) Oh, you know, I'm good. I'm good on Laguna Beach. Uh, Wow, wow. But it was interesting to see that. Smithereen Docks making an appearance. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Okay, well, you guys, this is not our last episode of the podcast. We have one more. We're going to recap both seasons So don't be done with us. We have one more week. So tune in next week. All right, you guys. We'll see you then.